Hi, I'm Dale Doherty at Foo Camp, and I'm here with Liam Casey of PCH International, who's uh, somewhere always between Ireland and China. And we're going to find out a little bit more about what PCH does. I'm kind of interested in, in exploring uh, the uh, future of manufacturing, not only just in China, but, but also learning about what it means for America and places like Detroit. So Liam, welcome. Great to be here. I just had a great weekend at Foo. That's good. So tell me a bit about what you do and uh, where, where this operation is. Okay, so we are um, manufacturing in the supply chain. We're in the supply chain industry. Uh, we design, manufacture, package, and fulfill some of the best products for some of the best companies in the world, um, mostly in the technology space. Um, we take product from production lines in China right through to consumers here in the U.S. or anywhere in the world. And we do it in a very short time frame. Mm -hmm. um, so you're an interface into China, China's manufacturing capabilities. Correct. Yeah. I mean, there's different parts of the, the supply chain that we manage. The first part is the manufacturing, which we have our engineering team, our quality team. They manage that whole process. Um, we are asset light in that space. We don't own the factories because there's an oversupply of capacity in that space. And the thing about manufacturing, manufacturing for all products has been commoditized. Um, and it's a big change in the whole manufacturing uh, world. Um, so we, we're not interested in owning those factories, but we're interested in working with best-in-class factories for that space. The second part of our business is managing that out-of-box experience. It's the packaging, putting the product in the box. So when you buy um, a new product and you take it out of the box, that out-of-box experience is a moment of truth for that brand. Okay? So it's really important that they get that right. And the, f the final part of what we do is the whole fulfillment. So we take it from the production line in China and we actually can deliver it right through to a consumer's door here in the US in two days, two to three days from China. Um, so that end-to-end -end supply chain is very unique. Um, and that's what we've built over the last 15 mm -hmm. years. And where are you located? Um, our operations headquarters is in Shenzhen in China. Right. So if if I'm an American going over to visit there, what, what am I going to see that's really kind of shocking or, or unusual about the factories and, the, and, and this whole, whole area? I think the, the, the one word you can use is scale. It's just huge. Um, and again, over the last, you know, we've been there in St. Jen for over almost 15 years. Um, and in that period of time, it has just grown at a huge rate. And it started as a component supply base, okay, and then like it had a great ecosystem of components. And now it's built out into building finished products. So for so the last integrated yeah. products. So again, and people talk now about, you know, where's it gonna go next? Is it gonna go to Vietnam? Is it gonna go to different parts of China? The hardest thing to do now is okay, if you're gonna go there, you're gonna have to transplant all of the components and all of the final assembly. It's not that simple just to take the final assembly and transplant it because the ecosystem of suppliers will have to move as well eventually. Otherwise, your lead time to get the raw materials mm -hmm. from the Pearl River Delta to those locations mm -hmm. is going to add to your manufacturing time. And in our business, time is often the number one currency. Getting the product to market is critical. If we miss a ship date for, or for one of our clients, if they miss the ship date on a launch of a new product, it could knock billions of dollars off their share price. If they go to the street and they announce mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. it could knock billions of dollars off their share price. So to them, time is number one. Mm -hmm. What about expertise there? Are, is, is there an unusual level of expertise in, in, in the area? Uh, yeah, I mean, again, manufacturing has changed and, and like it, it's continuing to change. And you know, the, as we make products today, and as, as the consumer electronic products are being manufactured today, most of them have been developed, those practices have been developed in and perfected in that region because it's, you know, if you manufacture a product here in the Western world, in Europe or wherever, for the last number of um, years, you would have been building in automation. When you look at China, it's about, you know, manual work. Now that's changing a little bit. But the, so the processes that have been built have all been around, um, that manual procedure. Right. I think I've seen some things, uh, even like someone like Bunny Wang, who's yeah, yeah. come back there and he yeah. shows Bunny you know, just one, uh, one person doing a step repetitively, yeah. but a lot of it. A lot of yeah. it. Yeah. And, and so that's, it's still kind of uh, 
I mean, to our way of thinking, in a certain ways, it'd be 50 or 60 years ago what some of the assembly lines would look like in America. They're not very automated. They're, they're, they have cheap labor. Yeah. I mean, and again, it is a low-cost manufacturing base, that's right. for sure. It's also a very skilled workforce. And again, you know, when we look at it as a region, I mean, to me, it's not just about the low-cost manufacturing. If it was pure low-cost, we would go somewhere else. It's around the ecosystem um, of suppliers that's there mm -hmm. and about that whole, you know, the infrastructure that's there is built around moving products out of there fast. The time which we can take a product from raw material to a consumer, mm -hmm. uh, it, from concept has, to consumer, right. is as short as you'll ever get. Is it also changing from being sort of complex and you have to know everybody kind of thing to something that's a little bit more open? Yeah, yeah, um, great, yeah, great point. I mean, we, what we say about China, when I went to China first, I mean, you know, it was all about finding the factory. If you found the factory and you got the name for the factory, you were in business, mm -hmm. okay? That's completely changed. What we say about it is, back then, it was a knowledge-based challenge. Today, it's an execution-based challenge, okay? You can have all the factories in the world. You can go to Alibaba.com, MadeInChina.com, Global Sources. You can go to all these databases and you get all of the names of all the factories that you want in China. Mm -hmm. And you've got thousands of them. Now it's all about execution, and you have to have absolute world-class execution to be able to deliver the products. Um, and it's not, no longer about just finding the factories. And that's all become transparent. We meet a client now, if they come in the first time, we'll show them the factories we're going to use to make their product. And we're happy to let them, if they want to go and do it direct initially, yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. um, because it's, now it's about execution. Right. So I think we've talked about this before in other contexts, but is is there increasingly an opportunity for small run manufacturing uh, where even a hobbyist might take a product to China and again, it, you know, it might have required the resources of a medium to large size company to do this, you know, uh, 10 years ago, but, you know, is it, is it increasingly open um, to small scale manufacturing? More and more it is becoming. Um it is becoming more accessible and for to do small runs. Um, and again, the in the past, you would have had to ma manage very long lead times. Now with the lead times coming down, and small, it's easier to do small runs. Um, and again, there are more and more um, facilities being set up to do end-to-end -end small runs. We actually have one ourselves. It's our PCH Accelerator, where we're actually assisting startup entrepreneurs here. Um, they focus really on Silicon Valley and we're trying to help them to actually bring products to market faster. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, partly it's just to, to reduce the learning curve and you know, f figure out how to get, that, get things done quickly over there, right? Yeah, and it's, again, it's, you know, we've built up an ecosystem of suppliers that we know mm -hmm. what's, what's achievable from each one. We know who's mm -hmm. best in class. Right. And that, the knowledge that we've built up over the years, right. uh, tied together with right. the execution. So, there doesn't have to be an answer for American manufacturing in this. Uh, it, it could be that uh, they're, there's, they're disconnected. But as you know, I'm doing a Detroit Maker Fair and um, really kind of interested in what the opportunities are in, in, in a city that kind of represents the, the Rust Belt, that represents the old manufacturing capacity that we've had in this country. And we're still, you know, uh, uh, I believe we're still the leading manufacturer, um, uh, but it's a, different, it's a different kind of business than what we have in China. I'm just kind of interested in what you think about, uh, it, it, you know, will it just remain concentrated in China? Are there opportunities, new opportunities or new niches that, that America might exploit? You know, again, when you look at manufacturing in the if you look at consumer electronics world, it's changed a lot. And again, when you look at the products which we touch, MP3 players, uh, GPS devices, digital cameras, they weren't made in China 10 years ago. So it's all very new. And now it's more about perfecting it and about getting it better. And, you know, one thing, when you look at the end-to-end -end supply chain, and, you know, now when a company launches a product, they try and do it global. So, and globalization is something that everyone struggles with. Okay, time zones, different language barriers, different cultural barriers. So trying to get product out to a market and, there's, and to get it there on time. So we break the supply chain into different areas. We, break, you know, we manage the production in China, the customer service is done in Ireland for the time zones for our customers here mm -hmm. in the US. It's great. You're right in the middle. And then you have your, your, our salespeople are based here and our, some of our other customer service people are based here as well. But if you look at 
taking key parts of a supply chain, whether it's engineering, whether it's development, research, that can be done in different areas. And again, Detroit, for example, has got probably the best knowledge in the automotive industry. You, know, you take that, with, you look at the automotive industry in China, and it's growing at a huge pace. Definitely there's an opportunity to tie some of those companies and those entrepreneurs to work together. Mm -hmm. Don't know what it is, but I know that there's right, definitely something right, there. Right. Well, that's what my feeling is Detroit has this, I mean, uh, you know, expertise and yeah. capacity, uh, but uh, what it, it, to some degree, needs to open up a bit, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, to figure out new yeah. ways of combining yeah. those units and components into, into new, in, in, in new ways. And again, you know, if you look at the companies we work with, I mean, we work with some huge brand companies here in the U.S., and we work with very large manufacturers in China. And you look at the value creation, and by far, the U.S. companies are far better at creating value um, than, than, than say the Chinese factories mm -hmm. today, okay? So that's an opportunity and it's all about building brands. We talk a lot about the smiley curve and where you have R&D, um, development, engineering, and on the other side you've got the branding, sales and marketing and distribution. And that's where I think the U.S. companies need to really focus mm -hmm. on the outside of the smiley curve. Mm -hmm. The inside of the smiley curve, I mean, that's what we manage as a company. Mm -hmm. Um, and we see that as being, you know, that's where and we look at clients that are really good on those sides, especially to get up into the, the sales and marketing side. And we like the companies that can really get a clear message and be able to sell their product. Okay. Um, and again, and we always say to our clients that, look, you win and lose in the high streets in the US. We win and lose in the back streets of China. Yeah. And they're very different. Right. I'm very comfortable dealing in the back streets of yeah. China. Okay. <laughs> well, someday I'd like to visit and see the yeah. back streets of China. Please.